Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and this is Steel Flyers. And you can get them at Steel Flyers on Twitter, right? At yep. Steel Flyers on Twitter. Yep. And uh, we just did a video, the last video I did. Um, this guy is an up-and-coming podcaster. I, I got to good know him through a wonderful friend and awesome writer who we're going to talk about a bit today. Johnny Basco, uh, Basco, Jamie Basco, Johnny Basco. I, I get the Johns mixed up because almost every person I know that does uh, hockey, his name, first name is John. But yeah, anyways, right. Jay, it is. There's so many Johns. I don't know. Jamie, <laughs> ba Jamie Basco, who, by the yeah. way, just had a little baby. Yeah, man. Congratulations to the man and the wife. Yeah. Yeah, man. So we met. And we got talking to each other. I just love, 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 love him. So go check him out on Twitter. Um, we did a, a video last time. Really enjoyed it. So we're going to do it again. And we got a whole lot of topics coming up today. So we better get right into it, buddy. What is the? What do you think is the? What's the first thing you want to talk about? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for having me, man. Like I can't even tell you how much of an honor it is to be here with you, um, to be on this show here with you, and. and being able to talk to you, getting to know you over the last, uh, you know, little while has been really great. Um, I think we do have a really, really good back and forth on what we're talking about. I really like the talk topics that we talk about and uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this. And when, when you were like, yeah, man, are you ready to go at three o'clock? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm ready to go. So <laughs> you too, like I said, thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here. So thank you very much. <clears throat> so what do you think? Uh, what do you want to get into? Last time we talked about the West. Uh, we right. talked about the Western Conference. We talked about uh, the playoffs and how the West was going to fare. And your your uh, great prediction, you heard it here first, Pearl of Wisdom, yeah, is, well, is picking Columbus over Toronto. So you got any, you got any great picks for us this week? Uh, so... Basically, like last time I said I was uh, who I picked my winner, I picked the person that the team that I thought was going to make it in in the West, and that was Colorado Avalanche. Um, and I think you said Dallas was your your Dallas, yeah. Dallas was your pick, or was he they they were the ones that were like your your uh, yeah, I could go with Dallas, but I do like your point on 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 Colorado. So I could definitely go with Colorado, but right, you said I, you almost changed her up there. <laughs> yeah, Flip flop on that one. So I was leaning towards Dallas, but you made a much better point with Colorado and they have a much better roster. And, and I think their goaltending is a little better and they're able to put goals in the net. So um, yeah, that's going to be the, the, the factor right there. Yeah. Um, so anyways, getting to the East, um, I'm so big, like I said, I think Columbus will beat Toronto. There's that's for sure. Oh no, I didn't say that. That's you. That is yeah. your spark of wisdom right there, buddy. I said that, yes. I yes, that's believe, right. Um, <laughs> I, I really, I'm putting it out there too. Like, I'm not hiding behind anything. It doesn't happen. If there's any Leafs fans out there that have a, a little have a little shame that I must need to go through because Toronto wins. You write down that comment. I can suck it up. That's right. Something. I'll suck it up. I'll put my my pride where my mouth is. I guess you best way to say. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There and, you go. Uh, and I will do something, whatever it is that you want me to do. I'll give you. Oh, I'll give you the glory. I'll give you the glory. The satisfaction. There you go. All right. There you go. <laughs> I honestly think Columbus could just do some damage, right, almost all the way up to the top. But I'm not going to pick them. I'm not going to pick them. Uh, you know, um, and I'll be real honest with you. I don't have a problem with picking them over Toronto, but we're going to see. We are going to see because it's it's going to be interesting because one of the things that we touched on last time was every team is going in fully healthy. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, so and one of the great points that you made was that teams that are playing in the um, series are going to have much more momentum. Uh -huh. You know, and that was one of the questions that they asked uh, Patrick Kane last night on that ESPN special on uh, Return to Sports okay. was, hey, uh, what's it going to be like to play without fans? You know, Mike Greenberg asked that question on the ESPN show uh, Return to Sports. And he came out and said, you know, look, it's going to be really strange. It's going to be really weird. Um, he said, but they're going to adapt. 
and they'll play. And, and the competitiveness is what he said of, of the guys out there is going to bring out the game. And, and they'll block out probably the fact that there's no fans in the stands. You know what I mean? So I thought that was very interesting to, to listen to that. That was pretty cool to hear, you know, what, what a player's perspective was going to be like because there's not going to be anybody in the stands. But you made it the good point of they're playing in a series, so they're going to be playing continually every night after night. So they're coming in with momentum. Yeah, I think, the, I think a team that's playing in the first play-in round is more likely to make it to the fi- make it to the cup finals than one that's not. There are variables in the East though, because we're talking about um, some super strong teams and some very well coached teams. Uh, uh, one of those teams that I think I like a lot, a lot, a lot, and I know you do, <laughs> is the Philadelphia Flyers. And, well, now and. And I'm not saying that as a Flyers fan, like an Eastern team, my favorite Eastern team fan. I'm saying that as a Carter Hart supporter, that that kid, if I had to pick a goaltender right now, honestly. Real deal. That's the kid right there. Real deal. Yep, yep. Real deal. Can't go wrong with that, man. Cannot go wrong with that at all. I seriously think that kid can almost do it by himself. Like, uh, and Phil, as a whole roster, do I think Philadelphia's got – a better roster out there, like excluding the goaltender than in, than all the other teams? Not necessarily, but I certainly think it's good enough that if Carter Hart's smoking hot, uh, yeah. yeah. Depth on the team, and, and yeah, you got to give it up to that kid because holy moly, if you look, if you go back to last year and look at what he did last year, now there was a huge carousel of goalies, uh, with the Flyers last year, I think they used what eight goalies, and he was hurt for a good portion of the of the time, you know. And when he came into play, he was really lights out. I mean, you could see the flashes of this kid when he was in there to play. And giving him the reins for the first time this year, number one goalie, you know, you're going to be the man. You're going to play the most games, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. Here you go. And the kid just stepped in and said, okay, no problem. What what, what you got? Went through a little stretch there where, where he was a little bit off. Um, didn't have a really good road record there for a little while. But but that's when Moose stepped in. You know, that's what Brian Elliott was there to you – know, that's why we paid him the money to be there for that year to step in and take those games. So mm-hmm. – it was a good tandem. They said they've, they've got a great relationship, and it's been great for Carter Hart. And look how well he has come. Look look where he's at now. And I agree with you 100%, man. Carter Hart is the man. Every game that kid improves. Like, he visibly improves every single game. I just love him. So, breaking from that, um, I, I think the East is so tough. Boston Bruins, Tuka Rask, and Chara, and... Uh, that that top three line, the top three of Bergeron, Marshawn, and Pasternak. I mean, they can destroy you. I just not a big fan of their depth. Uh, Which second, once you get past Bergeron, those those three four guys, well, what else you got? What you got? Yeah, Jake DeBrusque. Uh, this is off the top of my head, you know. Like, yeah, it's but now not, wasn't not stellar. Wasn't Pasternak? Didn't he tie uh, Ovechkin? For the number of goals, forty-eight, and they both have forty-eight this year. Yep. yep. Right. So, so there you go. So, I mean, the guy can put it in the net, and they can do and, it. and all three of those guys that you mentioned that you rattled off, they all can put it in the net, and they are all role players. They're all leaders. They're all you know. Those are the guys. You know that they're Especially putting the team. On. They're putting the team on their back, and they're saying, "We're the Boston Bruins, and here we come." But once you get past that, then what? And Char is getting old. True, still good, but yeah, he's still not good. good. But look, all you have to do is take his stick out, right, and be a little faster than him, and you got Char beat. Well, yeah, they got Krug and they got McAvoy. I mean, they got a good defense. They they've got so they've yeah, got. A good I defense. mean, President's Trophy for nothing. You know, they they got the President's Trophy, so they didn't get that for nothing. They're there, and uh, they if uh, if. They definitely could win it. And this is what I'm trying to say. I can name a lot of the, all, all, so many teams in the East 
or I can I can make a case for them winning for sure. No doubt about it. New York Rangers. That's just Sturkin kid. If he keeps on playing like he was playing. Yeah. When he oh, my gosh. There, I mean, that is. When you've got a goaltender playing like that. <laughs> we've seen it over and over and over again that a goaltender can take a team to the finals. And, uh, and can a lose team. a finals. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, yeah, boy. <laughs> we've seen yeah. both sides of that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, and I mean, it's not like their lineup is not good. It's young. It hasn't had playoff experience before. That's and the only thing. That's the only thing. That is the only thing. It is the only thing. Uh, take, so I take, I'm going to take them down a notch and I'm not selecting the Rangers for that reason, but they scare me. Boston scares me. Philly scares me. It's not the same as in the West. There's not as many teams where I can look at it and say, that team scares me. In the East, there's lots of teams that say, that could do it, that could do it, that could do it. Washington, I don't like their coach. I don't think Ovechkin likes their coach, and I don't think he's going to be there for very long. Um, uh, goal it does kind of seem that way. Yeah, yeah. I, no, it does. It does. It does have, have that appearance that it doesn't. I don't think the whole team is that high on him, and I, I don't think ownership or anything. I don't think he, and I don't think it's his fault. He's just a young coach coming after Barry Trotz. After winning the Stanley Cup, you mean, you know, yeah, that's some tough shoes to fill. Exactly. That was tough. That but was tough. to have them where they are right now, for Solid being team. a young coach, so did he or did the organization is more of a better question. Did the organization manage to keep most of the team and – make a couple additions with by subtraction. I mean, they got rid of Niskanen and got Radko Gudis. You know what I mean? But did they, they, here they are. They're, you know, number three seed. Here we go. Stacked. They got a stacked lineup. But I have, here's my problem with Washington. I watched them through the year and there were games that are like, okay, got to win this one. And they didn't. They couldn't. They wouldn't change their system against a Columbus team that will destroy a team like that if you don't change your system. And they didn't. There was too much stubbornness. And not uh, to me, it didn't look like a team that had a lot of foresight in what they were doing. They were just out-talenting the other side. And I don't think that's going to do it in the playoffs. Yeah, you're not going to get that anymore. You're, you're not because teams are coming in fresh. You're, you don't have teams that are coming in limping in anymore. you got teams coming in fresh. And, and mm-hmm. you're just not going to have that, you know, and I agree with you. I, I, I'm not really all, I'm honestly not worried to be honest with you about Washington. If because there's a team we that is- played them so well. I was surprised. I was like, wow, Philadelphia really did really well against Washington. I was like, okay, not so much about Boston. Boston would be the only team really on the East that I would be a little bit concerned about just because we didn't, the last game we played against them, we lost two to nothing. It wasn't our best game and we haven't played them very well historically throughout the year. Tampa Bay mixed bag half and half with them, but everybody else up and down the East, you know, we pretty much had a good record against everybody. So that would be the only teams that I would honestly say, other than what you said, if you get a Montreal or New York, or a Columbus, or a Hurricanes, or an Islanders, or, or any one of those teams, or Pittsburgh that gets hot and bang, suddenly they're putting it together. Hey, man, there you go. You know, I don't, so. I don't want to play Columbus or Pittsburgh out of the playing round. Those are two teams that are so well coached, and uh, they're going to be on a roll. I really, would, if I had to pick two that I'm not interested in playing, those are the two. But Tampa Bay, I don't know. I think there's, let's face it, there's a lot of sheen off on what happened last year, right? It just it doesn't seem to be able to get out of my head. And it's I agree. Better, and it's agree. probably not right. And I'm probably undervalued. They might be able to go in actually being like an, uh, uh, with an underdogish type way. Yeah, and Stamkos is supposed to be back. So, yeah, yeah Stamkos is supposed to be back. So, hey, man, we'll see. But yeah, I'm with you on that. They got their. They've got the power. They've got the. the they've got the uh, scoring to kill you, and this jo- the Sorelli kid. Oh man, I love that kid. Whoa, <laughs> he's, he's a 
game changer. Yeah, man. man. And there you go. Points, and you got points, and you got Stamkos, and you got Kucherov, and you got. Uh, I mean, the list you can rattle them off. You can rattle them off. And you've got a fantastic so. defenseman in Sergachev that's just blooming right now. Man, There's, I'll tell you. And speed, boy, they got Tampa Bay, man, boy, they they just got speed all up and down their lineup, and that's mm-hmm. just what that you know. Uh, and and we uh, yeah, speed kills. <laughs> That's what no. I'm saying. Like, I don't want to. These are uh, there are so many teams in there that scare me uh, that it's hard for me to pick one. I could see Tampa Bay. I could see Boston do it. But like I said, when it comes to the playoffs, I'm going to take depth. I'm looking at Philly, Tampa Bay, um, Pittsburgh, and Columbus. Those are the four that I like. All right. I don't know about the Pittsburgh game. It to me, I think some of this is gonna hinge on what hub cities are selected. Because if Pittsburgh is playing in their home building, that is win win for the NHL. That's win win for everybody involved because they're playing at home. Okay. So that's at least all their games are going to be played there in Pittsburgh. There's no fans, but they know the facility. They know the ice. They're familiar with how the boards react, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. It's yeah. their home building. You can't tell me that's not going to be an advantage if you're the Penguins coming out there skating in, in your own building, if that's one of the hub cities. You can't <laughs> tell me that's not going to be an advantage if Columbus is selected and they're out there skating on their home ice. You can't tell me that if Edmonton isn't out there skating out there on their home ice, that's not going to be some kind of an advantage. Talking about that, by the way, it doesn't look like it's going to be a team from Canada now. Our prime minister just came out and said that he's extending for another four months for uh, payments for people that are for co- that are unemployed due to COVID, and uh, that he's also extending the uh, travel going in and out so the restrictions the restrictions so it doesn't look like although he did say that it's not just because that's the case doesn't mean that they can't do that but i just find it to be a very unpalatable projection to put on the league to say that and then come say yeah okay everybody can come and play here i it just doesn't seem to work for me and for all the reasons that you brought up i i think you did a very good job of show of, of making a point that it didn't make sense for Edmonton. Vegas is it for sure. Yeah. When we talked last week or last time about Vegas being the, the, the yeah. Western. And you, we were, you were correct. Yeah. You were correct. Yeah. I look, I, and I thought Edmonton did put out a really great um, proposal and I think they were the best proposal, you know, that they put out there for to be a host city or a hub city. But, and I thought, and, and I, I could be wrong, but I thought that they were going to waive the restrictions on the sports travel. But I think that's only if they're coming from Canada into the United States. I don't think that's going the other way, where if we're coming from the United States into Canada, you know what I mean? Because you guys make your own rules up there in Canada. I think our rule was if you were coming from Canada, we were going to waive the travel restrictions. You still had to do the 14 day quarantine, but we were going to waive the travel restrictions. If you were coming in as an athlete to a team or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and there's the other problem is um, that you're talking about 600 players uh, coming in that have to be put into hotels and stuff like that. And I think we could do it, but I think Vegas is much more, <laughs> you know, they just have everything you need right there. They are a, hub of tourism so it would just seem to me that they 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 really deserve it honestly as much as i'd love to have them here because that was one of the if i was a person that i was choosing who i where i wanted to go vegas would be the pick for me but they were that was one of the things that that gary bateman was uh talking to uh mike greenberg on that special uh, was that he they wanted to select a a canadian city Mm -hmm. they wanted to have a canadian city to be one of the hub cities. Here's my biggest question though. They're waiting for the last possible minute to make this announcement. What are they waiting for? 
No, I was going to get into that. You know what? I think they're hoping that. I think they're waiting to the last second, hoping that things will change and they can just have a normal playoffs. They're waiting to the last second, just in case it could possibly happen. I doubt it will, but they're going to hold out and cross their fingers. For so that's what you're thinking. That's yeah. that's what you're that's what you're thinking. Really? Okay, because that's not what I was thinking. But okay. Okay. Oh wow! Because what were, what were you thinking? The what, uh, what? What's his name? Bill Dale. Is he the Bill Daly? Yeah. Bill Daly. Is he the associate president of the NHL or the assistant president or whatever? Like that, yeah. Right. But he came out and said um, that never say never, and they were going to plan on everybody playing in the host cities. But because that was one of the questions that was asked of him was, "Hey, what if?" everything's cool. Why can't we play back in our home cities? And he said, well, we're planning on playing in the home cities, but never say never. You know, if, if anything changes, we can roll with what changes. So that's what I was like, oh, well, okay. The assistant president of the NHL came out and said that. So, okay. Um, if that means that everything is cool by the time they're done with this whole round robin thing, because I think the whole round robin thing is going to happen in the hub cities. Yeah, 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 yeah. That because, sense, that, yeah, I mean, that makes absolute sense. It can't get, do it I, any other way, really. It's too much travel. Like, it's just crazy. It's got to, you got to pick one place for them to do it. And, and it should be a neutral place as much as possible, which it won't be with Vegas, but. Or Pittsburgh. <laughs> or Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pittsburgh wouldn't be in the round robin. Well, they, if they were the hub city, if they're one of the hub cities. If they're doing it that way, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if they're because they're listed as one of the hub cities, you know what I mean. So yeah. yeah, they that would definitely get that home ice advantage, whether or not there's fans in the stands or not. There was talk that what would happen is if, like, say uh, Pittsburgh and Montreal, and the hub city is one of the teams, they've got to travel to Vegas and play. Oh, in Vegas. to be to to play in in Vegas instead. Yeah. And then the the Golden Knights would have to play in Pittsburgh instead. That's right. Oh and wow! I, See, I, oh that's I, great. I, I agree with that. And if I were the players and the owners and the managers, I would be pushing that all the heck because I agree with you. I don't care if the fans are in there or not. Now, if you talk to Pittsburgh now, they're going to say, "Well, there's no fans," so they're going to undermine it. But the truth of is, Come on. you know the. The boards and the feel of the room. And oh the, yeah, come on. And your home. Yeah. You can go home to your families. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's not, how. How well, is that? No, there? no, 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 no. I don't think that's the case. Oh, they're not allowed to. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. Cause see, that's why I think having them play in the hub cities is really good. Because phase two is where they're bringing all the players into the home cities. So you get everybody all in the same spot. You get everybody tested, right? And you get everybody say, okay, now we're all tested and we're all good and we're all clean. Now we travel to the hub city, test again, make sure everybody's all still clean. And all the teams that come in do the same thing. Now you got all these people that you know have tested negative are in this bubble, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. where now they're all here now for this hub city and everybody's here is, is tested clean. So we're good. So that's yeah. why I think the hub cities are going to work for the first – getting everybody seated and getting all that stuff worked out. And then after that, when we break into the real playoffs, when they start playing the real games that really count and matter, why not be in the host cities? Things, things could be different by then. Yeah, that's the, because that's we're the talking, reason why they're holding off for so long. Because like, they want it to be all right. Yeah, I mean, because that puts us, what, almost the end of August till we're done – with training camp and the first round of the of these uh, seeding playoffs or round robin, well, where does that put us? That puts us what? Almost the end of August? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, you know, as long as I check my calendar, that's pert near two months away. Pert near. So. Near, yeah. <laughs> we, we have not we have nigh on two months. <laughs> We didn't even get into the Buffalo stuff that we wanted to talk about. And no, we'll but talk we about can't. maybe that our next episode. Oh man, because that was that was such a great thing. Because when when you start talking about the ownership and the fact that um, the Buffalo GM was fired 
today, right? And uh, Adams took over as the assistant GM, right, in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, so, we got five minutes. Let's, let's, let's give it a go. First of all, you're picking the East. My pick in the East. All right. I, I am going to go with my, my, my beloved Flyers. I really am. I think it's their time. I, I can't say enough about their depth. I can't say enough about their speed. And I can't say enough about their leadership and their goaltending. I, I think from the coaches on down, we've got a team that just people are going to be afraid to play the Flyers. And that's what we have been lacking. AV came right out and said it the first day, be an effing flyer. You can't argue that we have been, we have become a flyer. I, I'm leaning the flyers as well, but I'm, I'm conflicted because I honestly think Columbus can make it. I, do. Columbus. I, really, I think they can, if they get in out of that first round with some momentum, they could, I wouldn't want to play them. See, that's the thing. And, and that's, that's, I'm agreeing with you 100% on that whole round robin thing where I think the teams that play the series are going to have the better advantage because that's more of a playoff type style and they're going to have momentum going into that where you're not going to have a momentum after playing three games from three separate teams. You know, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think you're right on that. I think that was right on the money. You heard it right here first, buddy. Pearl of wisdom, man. <laughs> one, one, of those, one of those teams that's playing in the round robin is going to win it. And I, I, I can't necessarily disagree with you on that. If I had to pick one of those teams because of goaltending of Merzlikens or whatever, uh, I, it, would be the, it would be Columbus. Um, but uh, anything can happen. So, but, and, I, but if not, if it's not one of those teams – yeah. I'll, I'll take AV's coaching to coach a team to come out coming out of that round robin, and I'll take Carter Hart's and fantastic. Yeah. Fan, take Carter Hart. So I like. I, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, the Islanders are one of those teams that could surprise us. Um, I think that you you might see the Columbus Blue Jackets might be the surprise too. So, and Florida, you might have to sprinkle sprinkle a little Florida in there. <laughs> would have to be yeah, lights Bob out. Bob. Yeah, yeah. And if he Bobrovsky, is, Bob that team can do a lot of things. right. And that's why you have to kind of sprinkle a little Florida in there because of Bob, and yeah. and they have some depth and they have some speed and they have some guys that can put it in the net. So, yeah, I'm, I'm still going with Philly, but it's it's going to depend on seeding and all kinds of stuff. But I thought we'd throw it out there, anyways. Anyways, oh, I'm glad we did. Up. We're going to have to do the Buffalo thing a little later. We're at a half an hour here. We did our time. Uh, I okay. will do something really quick about Buffalo. I guess we can do. we got a couple minutes. Yeah. I We were we wanted to get into it, and we're going to talk about this more this next episode. So you're all going to be on the end of your edge of your seat because this is going to be important important news. <laughs> Very is. We're doing important work here. That's right. Industries. That's right. He's spreading the wisdom, folks. What we're going to talk about next time is we're going to talk about ownership and how it affects organizations. And Buffalo Sabres are a very good example of an ownership team that is showing to be lacking in just about every area. And it's time for something to happen there. And stop making excuses for your general manager, your coach, these players, that players. There's only one thing that's been there from the very beginning through all of this. And that's the exact same ownership. You know how it goes. If, if, if everything falls apart and you're the only consistent thing that's there the whole time, just mm. maybe you may be the problem. <laughs> right? Ding! <laughs> <laughs> I think the light bulb has gone off because that just might be the problem. And, man, there's a lot, of, a lot of controversy around ownership these days, especially in the baseball especially with what's going on with those guys. They're not trying to come back or they are trying to come back. Um, they have this whole special thing going on with the NBA and how their deals, excuse me, are worked out. And then they're not all of their stuff is guaranteed. And then the, the NFL basically has been sitting back because they haven't had to do anything. They're not playing. They're not, they don't have to worry about anything until September. So mm-hmm. they're basically just like, well, Hey man, We'll just let it all happen, and then when we have to, we'll be like, okay, well, we, we put all these protocols in place, and so there you go. So I think ownership is a huge 
way of how teams present themselves, how teams go about their business, how they win and how they lose. You know what I mean? Because it, your ownership, leadership reflects. Okay. And so if, if you don't have it, then it's going to trickle on down, you know, so and there's a lot of teams out there that have a lot of really special ownership. You know, people look at like the Steelers and the Roonies and, and stuff like that. And they think, oh, well, that's, that's a kind of special team. You know what I mean? And, and they think, oh, well, there you go. That's, that's how you run things. And then you look at Detroit, you Village. know, the Red Wings, the Red Wings. And, and, oh my gosh, man, how, that team has put it together every year. They're always, I mean, for, except for the last couple of years, ever since they got rid of Babcock, ever since they got rid of Babcock, they haven't really been making, making the playoffs, but every year, I mean, for year after year after year after year, Detroit, 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 Detroit. Mm -hmm. So they're doing something right up there. You know what I mean? And I think they're making good moves and, and rebuilding the way a team needs to rebuild and all of those things like that. But anyway, draft. that's just getting your 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 uh, uh, what are they, your palate set for the next. There you uh, go. Get ready to sink do. your teeth into that one, baby. Yes, because it's going to be fantastic. Because I think ownership doesn't get enough blame if to put a blame or people don't pay attention to it enough as to why teams do what they do in fact even general managers have to make decisions they don't like if an owner is telling them to do something and we're going to get into that next time thank you very much for coming my friend again oh man anytime brother anytime Steel flyers go to his twitter go give him love man because you're going to be seeing lots of them He's freaking, he's so, he's, he's, he's great. He's a wonderful uh, speaker and uh, knowledge of, of sports. And I just love him. And we're going to have so much fun together. So thanks, Perlo. Subscribe. You the man. You the man. Hit the bell. You know all that. Hit the subscribe and the bell and, and like and everything. And, and we'll frolic together. I promise you that. I'm going to come see all of you too. And I'm going to go see you in Philly. Have there a great you go, day. man. Lots of love to you.